John Gill's Exposition of the Entire Bible, being read by Dr. Peter John, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Scripture quote, I know thy works, unquote, John Gill quote, which were far from being perfect and not so good as those of the former church, unquote. Scripture quote, that thou art neither cold nor hot, unquote, John Gill quote. She was not cold or without spiritual life, at least in many of her members, as all men by nature are and carnal professors be, she was alive, but not lively. Nor was she wholly without spiritual affections and love to God and Christ, to his people, ways, truths, and ordinances. She had love, but the fervency of it was abated. Nor was she without spiritual breathings and desires altogether, as dead men are, or without the light knowledge of the gospel and a profession of it. And yet she was not hot. Her love to God and Christ and the saints was not ardent and flaming. It was not like coals of fire that gave most vehement flame, which many waters cannot quench, and had not the fervency of spirit in the service of it, the Lord. Nor was she zealous for the truth of the gospel, and for the ordinances of it, and for the house of God and its discipline. Nor did she warmly oppose all sin and every error and false way. Unquote. Scripture quote. I would thou wert cold or hot. Unquote. John Gill quote. Which must be understood, not absolutely, but comparatively, and not that it was an indifferent thing to Christ whether she was one or the other, but he alludes to that to what is natural among men, it being generally more agreeably to add anything entirely hot or entirely cold and than to be neither, and so uses the phrase to show his detestation of lukewarmness, and that it better to be ignored and not a professor of religion than to be a vain and carnal one. Christ desires not simply that she might be cold, but that she might be sensible of her need of spiritual heat and fervency. End of Revelations chapter 3 verse 15.